So, um, a, the, the first question, I guess, is the central interceptor itself will be very expensive, um, and it'll be good to get another, because there are different figures being uh, talked about, but it'd be good to get something more definitive about how much it will cost. But also, um, if that's the interim solution, what is the long-term solution and how much will that cost? Um, I'll, I'll leave those questions, yeah, leave it at that. So, so you're absolutely right, and, and questions have been asked previously at different forums at Council. I think at one forum we said 80% of the overflows will be, um, will be taken up by the central interceptor, and the question was, what happens to the other 20%? And we said, well, that would depend on the level of stormwater investment that goes in. So, so put simply, the central interceptor as it stands at the moment is a four and a half diameter tunnel from Mangri Wastewater Treatment Plant to Western Springs. And it will convey and store um, stormwater flows as well as wastewater. So the intention is that we need a new trunk sewer to meet growth. So um, we have the Auraki sewer and the Eastern Interceptor, and it's going by 2030 it will reach capacity for dry weather. So if there was no stormwater going in there, it will definitely reach capacity by then. So by building the Central Interceptor, it provides us with another trunk sewer to bring flows from Central Auckland to Mangri Wastewater Treatment Plant. But it will remove the flow from the Oreki system because it will be diverted to Central Interceptor. And the Oreki sewer and the Eastern Interceptor will then have free, um, some capacity freed up for growth in eastern parts of Auckland. Okay? So it has a double whammy benefit from a um, capacity point of view for wastewater. The, the Central Interceptor also addresses two um, structural concerns we have. One is the Manukau siphon, that it's there and it's been there for a while and it was only trenched and it wasn't tunneled and it could be vulnerable and we can't inspect it. So the central interceptor gives us some resilience and redundancy. But the way that we can construct this interceptor has to be by tunneling because Auckland is built up and sewers flow by gravity and we want to build in a straight line, and in a straight line we've got lots of properties. So it will have to be tunnelled. It's a deep tunnel so that we are in the uh, right geological ground, so it's 60 to 100 metres deep. Uh, the optimum size of a tunnel is between 3.9 and 4.5 diameter, so it's going to be about 4.5, and that will allow it to be safe and for material to be hauled in and out and all that. So we're, we're dealing with a 4.5 diameter uh, pipe anyway, even if we were just looking at it from a wastewater point of view and had no stormwater. But we have got stormwater entering um, our system and it's overflowing in uh, waterways. And so most of that will be picked up by link sewers and diverted into the central interceptor. So that's where the 80% of the current overflows will be picked up and will be um, discharge into the central interceptor. But the work that we're doing this afternoon with council officers is that our drivers are, water care, that we have wastewater capacity to meet growth, that we meet the resilience of the pipe underneath the siphon, um, Manukau and the Hillsborough Tunnel. But we also uh, will pick up the overflows from the combined sewers, which will have some environmental benefits. The stormwater group in council uh, have their drivers. Their drivers are to minimize flooding and make sure growth can be met. And this exercise is to make sure that the council's projects and our projects are aligned. But the central interceptor is not being designed, was never going to be designed and operated as a full stormwater system. Because a full stormwater system, which is a one in 10 year rainstorm, would, have requ would require a seven and a half diameter tunnel. 
So the, the, the exercise we've been referring to, I've been referring to earlier, is exactly the work that we're doing to make sure that um, both parties understand what's included in water cares projects, what's included in council projects. But the central interceptor will definitely pick the overflows that are there at the moment. Thank you, thank you for that. And so that explains the reference to an interim solution. So significantly more investment would be needed over time to cater for stormwater um, itself. Can, can, can I just come back to um, the area of, of the com combined sewer, especially in the, um, the, the Western Bays, Hoon Bay, St Mary's Bay, West Haven, and so on, Cox's Bay. Um, I understand now that the, the central interceptor will, by itself, will not provide a complete interim solution, solution or interim, whatever, um, to the problems of uh, sewer, sewage overflow into the harbour, but that um, you're suggesting that um, another uh, interceptor or, or sewer would be needed um, to, to, to convey uh, sewage and stormwater from, for instance, Hackett Street, in, um, which, in, which discharges into West Haven is causing problems there. So that's a, another technical, it's not as simple as understood originally. Yeah, so that's the uh, work Ravine, that we... Ravine, I'll just get Stephen to comment here, because we're just... Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, look, um, through you, Chair, that's the meeting that Raf Ravine referred to that we had last week. So what we've agreed to do is to define the central interceptor in its current form. It's a bit like the city rail link. Um, we've all, both parties have got to make sure that we don't incrementally increase the scope of the central interceptor to be something that it never was. So the areas that um, you're now referring to, Councillor Lee, will be the subject of a waterfront a waterfront and central optimisation project. Uh, and we, our Healthy Waters team, led by Craig McElroy, believe that we have some much lower cost solutions to put on the table for that area that over time will substantially uh, improve the water quality issues that we've got around that coastline. I, I, I probably need to uh, continue the conversation with the Chief Executive, but in terms of the um, public concerns about these um, increasing overflows, um, especially with development in the area like SHAs, uh, when you say it's a low cost solution, could we have some numbers, A, the, around the defined central interceptor and what these low cost solutions would be, and also how soon could these low cost solutions be put in place for those Western Bays? I, I don't expect the answer right now, but... We can do that. But, but I'd gr be grateful if, if, if this could be sent to me after the meeting. Thank you. So again, that's a substantial LTP issue. There's no question. I had a finance question. <coughs> we have Councillor Wayne Walker, Member Helenick, Darby, Cashmore and Newman again. I had a finance question, Mr. Chairman. And if you Good. really want to get out of here before 10 o'clock tonight, I think we need to... We'll stick to finance Got questions. Oh, so, Councillor Walker. See the, um, toothpaste. <laughs> see the loss from the um, network is around 13%. What, what cost does that amount to? Well, depends how you want to cost it. 13% um, of our total is a big number. Right? So 13% uh, is like um, having a Waitakere dam. Okay, I, so I just to, make the uh, suggestion that it would be useful to convey that information because when you have information <coughs> in that form, it tends to drive more of a response to yep. to deal with it because it's pretty significant. Uh, the other thing that's not reported in here is your conservation target, 15%. Um, um, yep. Is that because this is just a quarterly report? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we we are well on target. And we are going to do a massive campaign early in next year on 
uh, demand management, and we're already working with the likes of Housing New Zealand and large industries, but we've got a campaign coming in the new year. Can I just make the observation that you're effectively building mass transit to the airport? The, <laughs> you can travel by it if you like, Wayne. <laughs> we do have the most efficient transport I, systems. That was, yes. that was a joke. I don't know. <laughs> if only we could fit people in it. <laughs> Four and a half metres wide, well, you probably could. could yeah. <laughs> Horizontally. Yeah, just looking at uh, your contribution to Māori outcomes, and I see there you've done some work, engagement, and <coughs> frameworks, and whatever, but. If you turn back to actually the percentage of the iwi groups that you've, you've got there, that you've got MOUs with, uh, out of a total of 19, you've only got about 60% of that, but you only actually, last three months, you've only got MOUs with about 15%. Are you happy that uh, whatever finances you're putting into that, you're getting the right bang for your buck? And if not, what's the rationale behind it? You're going to change that number, because that 60% is a low number, and you only got 15% iwi um, that have signed up. Yep. Um, I, I don't think... Iwi sign-ups are linked with financials. Um, so we are, we are working with all of the groups, and we are very hopeful that we will get them all signed up. Yeah, I'm just wondering whether there's a fiscal problem there. I mean, you're only sitting on 15%. I, I don't agree with what you're saying. Everything costs money, and if the money's going in the wrong direction or we're not getting performance, whether that's by Iwi or whoever, we need to know about that. So I'm asking you, Watercare, what are you doing about lifting that percentage? What are you doing moving forward? The percentage of the number of agreements we've got. That's right. If you've yeah. got no agreement with Iwi, it seems hard to consider that you've actually got a whole lot of contribution there. Yeah, well, what I'm saying is that we're not getting our Iwi um, documentation and relationship MOUs signed up um, using funding. The relationships are being signed up based on genuinely working together. So it's not a question of how much funds have we put on the table. Um, so that's not the constraint. The constraint is genuinely working towards what is it that we're going to do, what is it that they want done, and whether we've got alignment. And it takes time talking to the groups. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to hear that money is not the constraint. Thank you. Councillor <laughs> Darby. Thanks, Ravine, and, and others, Margaret. Um, look, I'm just noticing from your, I think it's your current board report, um, your um, water loss is actually in the the red threshold zone. It does show orange on the report, but it's actually red. in the red at 13.3. Uh, and then I look at um, a trial that you undertook at Waiuku, which achieved a 22% significant water reduction saving uh, when you implemented smart metering, which we've talked about at other quarterly reports. So what are your learnings out of that Waiuku trial that you might apply regionally and what is the timing for applying them regionally, if that is your direction? Absolutely. Very, very good question. Thank you. So the, the trial at Waiku had four elements. One was the actual device that we use, the meter or the dongle we can put on existing meters. So that was one bit of the trial. The second trial was getting that information from the meter to a receiving area. So whether we use phones or other nets, um, so we, tr we were able to trial that, the effectiveness of that. The third bit was getting the data and then analyzing the data, and you know, because it's a lot of data, and, and how would we analyze it, and how would we make sense out of that. And, and the fourth, most important bit was, how are we going to use the information with the individual customers? How are we going to share it with them so that they can change their behavior? Uh, so in addition to putting smart meters, we also put what is called district meters, so that we can see what is, what is the volume of water going into that area and then how much are we selling. And we found, uh, because it is Waiku and we inherited that from Franklin, um, there were a number of connections that did not have meters or meters had been removed. So we, that was the bulk um, of the, um, the savings we found. There were some older meters which underread, mechanical meters underread. So as we replaced them, the readings were uh, more accurate. Of course, the consumer paid more, so there was a reaction from the consumer that you've put a new meter and I'm having to pay more, so we had to manage that. So that, the number of learnings. The, um, the idea is that we are rolling out a meter renewal project. Uh, which is part of our, one of the capex, one of the reasons our capex is underspent is 
there's a real shortage of trained individuals out there who can do this work for us. Mm. Okay, so, um, so we are building that capacity with contractors <coughs> to do meter renewals. And the idea is to put more smart meters. So we haven't yet put smart meters in new subdivisions. Uh, we are discussing with electricity companies, retailers and lines companies, because they're looking at putting smart meters. Could we do things together? And then where we've got the renewals, there's opportunities there. So there's, there's a whole series of opportunities. Thank you, Robin. Councillor Cashmore. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, fairly high level question. With the unitary plan, we've still got 70% of potential growth, and we're at the high end of growth now coming in. Um, you've already asked the Mayor's questions about your AMP program can handle the whole potential growth, and we've seen the Greenfields work. Um, we understand the Housing Infrastructure Fund. How about the Brownfields? How well do we understand the Brownfields, especially in the Isthmus, about capacity? So, so the brownfields are definitely a challenge because, as you know, my understanding is that um, we could end up with a very large density multi-storey building or buildings virtually anywhere. <laughs> um, and so what would the implications be? So for us, uh, we've allowed in our asset management plan a sum of money that would be used to renew. And so... <coughs> Some of our renewal projects we are deferring because we are saying we don't want to renew existing pipes with something that's small. 